Ah, c'est c'est Mola, Mola, Wari Kibitena, Na, Empathie Peta Mola. Ah, c'est c'est Mola, Mola, Wari Kibitena, Na, Empathie Peta Mola. My name is Ntavise. I attend school at Roma Primary. I, I am 10 years old. I am in grade 5. The other school was a little bit of 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 a little bit Ha pompe lit in Latin, Gahona, Kivilina, Koyoba, Lina, Koyoba, La Helibu Mans, Mansibuyan, Kahona, Ruhamiti. Hundreds of children like Natabi in Lesotho's lowlands spend a lot of their play and study time walking long distances to fetch water. The Kingdom of Lesotho, a country landlocked and surrounded by South Africa, otherwise has abundant water resources with a crisscrossing network of rivers in its highlands. And while it exports almost 2,000 cubic meters of water to South Africa every year from the highlands, almost two-thirds of its own population living in the lowlands face acute water shortage, slowing growth and development. <laughs> The government of Lesotho realized that there were problems with water within the country. There had been previous projects, but they, they had been principally supplying water to South Africa. So Metalong Diamond Water Supply Program was initiated as a fast track project in the overall lowland scheme uh, because that's where the most urgent need was. This is really the first scheme that's really dealt with the local population. The Metalong Dam and Water Supply Program came into being in March 2007 with the aim to provide domestic and industrial water to almost 500,000 people in Maseru and the neighboring lowlands. Ten funders, including the governments of Lesotho and South Africa, an Arab consortium, the European Investment Bank, the Millennium Challenge Corporation of the US, and the World Bank came together to fund the $430 million project. The project is going to be in two phases. First would be for those uh, services which are already served by water and storage company, which are the urban centers I mentioned. The second phase now will be all the villages which are alongside the conveyor systems, they will be provided with the water. The construction of the 83 meter high roller compacted concrete metal long dam flooding a 14 kilometer stretch of the Putyatsana River started in 2010. In, in terms of the, the socioeconomic impacts of large dams, which Metalung Dam is no exception to, you would normally have serious um, impacts on the people, live, especially those people whose assets and properties are, would be affected by the various construction activities. My area is just behind that village when you go up straight, but the other trees are in the water now. I lost 77 trees in the area of uh, 700 kilometers area. To date, the program has affected about 2,700 households in the entire Metalone Dam and Water Supply Program areas, and we've paid compensation to the tune of 43 million maluti. As required by the World Bank um, safeguard policies, it is not only enough to say that you've paid people compensated or you've compensated them for, for their losses. It's also important to make sure that you also re restore the livelihoods of those uh, program-affected persons. Funded by the World Bank, the Metalong Authority planned an extensive skills development program for the economically displaced. An agricultural expert from the government now works with the community on improved and innovative farming methods, training many like Makoto. I was trained 
to look around what can be needed by the people whom I stay with in, the, in my village. The first thing I saw is just because I, I saw that the, the trees have been taken out by this dam. So I decided to plan for the nursery. I was just a housewife. Uh, <laughs> Now I've changed my life after I've been trained. And I decided, uh, I also invited my husband to help me and my, my children. Like Bokoto, almost 300 Basutus or local people have been trained to start their own business and are being supported by the Metalong Authority to find financial support from local banks or trust funds. As the dam construction progressed, there were studies that revealed that the dam waters would impound and flood nine rock shelter sites with Stone Age rock art and substantial archaeological deposits. In an unprecedented move, the World Bank funded a unique program carried out by a team of experts from the Oxford University that aimed at saving and preserving these archaeological finds. It also helped in triggering an interest in the local community about their own heritage. Before I joined the team, I was a teacher at the primary school next to my village, next to my home. There was some time when I went down to the, to the shelters where they were excavating, the team were working. And then I saw what they were doing and I wanted to understand the work they were doing there. And then I, read, I just got interested in what they were doing. And uh, I wanted to be part of them. I started uh, working, in fact, training as a in a sorting and sifting station. So we got um, so many flakes, pottery, grindstones. I think that the focus was mainly on Stone Age sites, rock art sites. During the years 2008 to 2010, 11, all of the area was thoroughly surveyed again, and new heritage sites or heritage deposits were identified. All the rock art, which I believe were more than two dozen sites, were carefully traced and photographed. Major excavations were carried out at the two Middle Stone Age sites, and these excavations lasted for many months. I, I think what's unique about this project is that it has raised the the standards to engage the public. And I, I think the World Bank has gone the second mile, even the third mile, in order to assist. Now for the first time, we realize that the local communities themselves are attached to a landscape. I did meet uh, all the artifacts all along the way, even when I was a head boy. I didn't even know what was, was that, those things. I just took them as stones. When I joined the team, it's when that I realized, okay, these things are very important and then they are connected to my, to my culture. And then it's then that I realized that it's, it's part of me now. I like it. One of the other features of the World Bank intervention, which was extremely well appreciated, is that local people were trained as archeological technicians to carry out work and to gain new skills which they didn't have before. And in that sense, to build up the human resource capacity in the country to manage this. I want to pursue this as my career because um, I have realized that um, in Lesotho, there is just few of uh, people who know about archaeology. And on my side, um, I've got so many opportunities right now. People like us, we need to, to pick up, go to school and learn more and then come back and then do something about heritage in Lesotho. The work of Joseph and other community members along with the Oxford University team has ensured that the rock art panels are now safely preserved as the dam waters floods the sites. The roller compacted concrete dam is now pumping 93 million liters of water per day to the treatment plant. The first process, it goes over a cascade where we have uh, chemicals are added, a polyelectrolyte, which causes the sediment, to, sediment in the water to make bigger particles. And thereafter, it enters into the sedimentation tanks just behind me where the sediment falls to the bottom and is taken away. There's the waste product and the clean water is uh, collected in the launders that you see behind me. 
From thereafter, it is taken across to a pipeline to the filter bed, and it passes through another set of filters which removes the finer particles in the water. The final process is chlorine gas is added into the water, which kills the rest of bacteria, and the then treated water is pumped to the command reservoir, where it gravitates into the pipelines that feed the major towns. This world-class quality water then reaches the people through taps and standpipes in the lowland areas, ending years and years of water scarcity and stimulating growth and economy. There will be a provision for, for a radius of 300 for each of the villages that there is a public standpipe, so you don't have to walk over 200 meters or 150 meters to get to, to, to a water supply. And not just better living and hygienic conditions, but the water also brings with it the promise of financial security through employment. Linio Mohali is 38 years old and a single mother. She has been working at the Formosa textile factory for 10 years now and earns around $120 per month. The textile industry, which is largely dependent on a steady water supply, is the largest private sector employer in the country, employing more than 40,000 people, with almost 85% being women, many of them sole breadwinners for their families like Mohale. At 25%, levels of unemployment in Lesotho is among the highest in the world. We have provided up to 10,000 employment opportunities locally, which means uh, if this poor company having difficulty to run its business, then we will lose this one quarter of employment. And all these poor companies, we all rely on water a lot in the process of dying and also in the process of finishing. Without water, we were not going to have the finished product at all. So with this uh, new reservoir project completed, I'm sure the water company, they're going to have a more stable water flow. A stable water supply would mean job security for many like Mohale. It would help her save more money to send her children to school. Uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, in Maluti terms, for every 23 units, which is 23,000, there is one employment created. And this value addition to the water that we, we are providing for Maseru, it, it's not just going to be consumption, but it's also job creation. As the abundant water from the dam flows, there has also been infrastructural growth. 75 villages without electricity until now are being electrified under the environmental and social management program funded by the World Bank in collaboration with the European Investment Bank. Ke <laughs> also living a healthier life is Mamo Sala. She's part of the 15,000 community members who are benefiting from the HIV AIDS program started by the Metalong Authority. 
knowing that Lesotho is number two in terms of HIV AIDS uh, prevalence in the, in the whole world, and that currently the total prevalence rate in the country is at 23%, we felt at Mitulung, as Mitulung Authority that it is important to manage this pandemic in the project area. To that effect, we put together an HIV AIDS management program that was meant to educate and inform and create a certain level of awareness amongst the workforce and the communities in the project areas. There's also a component of um, treatment care and support. The 7 p.m. alarm on Mamusala's phone is a reminder for her medicines. As part of the support group, she's now not only ensuring her own medication, but also helps other HIV-positive people in her support group take their medicines. She remembers how she found out about her pregnancy soon after she was told that she's HIV positive. While she was devastated, she also had a mother's optimism of nurturing a healthy child. Together, through community help and the support group, she gave birth to a healthy baby. For Mamo Sala, the Metalong Dam has meant a healthier and happier life with her children. For Masse Balelo, it means having electricity for the first time in her home. For Mohale, it promises financial independence and for Joseph, it has connected him with his heritage and roots. Today, as the world debates development versus environment, for the people in the lowlands of Lesotho, it has meant not just giving, but also receiving. And yes, indeed, it's an investment for the future. It's an investment for little children like Natabi, for whom a water tap at home can finally be a reality, helping her live more free and dream big.